David Tracy is a journalist and eco-urbanist and a certified arborist who specializes in organic fruit trees and edible landscapes. He's a farmer and gorilla gardener at heart who has lots of inspirational advice to green up our cities and turn our yards and balconies into beautiful mini farms filled with flowers, beets, greens, and herb pots. A, uh, a plenty, I'm sure. It is my pleasure to welcome David Tracy to Studio 4, back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Nice to see you again. Great to be here, and I love the set, by the way. It's changed a bit since I was here last time. Oh, were you in the dog studio? I was somewhere, but I couldn't see out so well, so oh. now I can actually see them we steal my bike. We refer to it fondly it. as the dog studio. <laughs> oh. Yes, these <laughs> digs are much it. spiffier, aren't they? It's very nice. Elegant. Mm -hmm. Elegant. Now, um, back to this new food revolution uh, in the city. Where to start? How to start? Well, in the book, I start people at the smallest scale, and I move up in scale with each chapter. So the smallest scale is the nearest farm you'll ever know, which is your kitchen windowsill. Mm -hmm. So if you just have a few pots and you drop in a few seeds of herbs, maybe something that you like to cut and cook in a stew or soup or salad or whatever right there. Sure. Um, you're joining the new food revolution and you're one of the 800 million urban farmers of the world. 800 million. And now growing. And growing. Is there a secret to growing basil or basil, basil or basil, rosemary indoors? Or um, a little herb pot indoors in a high rise? No, uh, yes, live in a sunny location. Right. That's that too. about the only one you really need. Plants mm -hmm. don't know they're in the containers, so you can fool them. You just have to provide what they really need, which is sun, adequate water, a little nourishment, and they'll do the rest. All of the above. Mm. Uh, well, growing uh, veg on your balcony, how great is that? Oh, yeah. Go out and pick a little lettuce. Well, it also helps because sometimes when we grow a little farther away, we get a little reluctant sometimes to go tend our farms and the weeds are there. We know we got to mm -hmm. do it, but I'm, I really don't want to go today. But when it's right there out on your balcony staring you in the face, uh, you will go out and do it every day. Sure. In a perfect uh, David Tracy world in the green city, <laughs> on, on the rooftops, what would you see? Well, we have a green roof over here, as you know. Yeah. There are a few in the city. Uh, I would see an edible city. So you would see food uh, in all aspects of the city. It would be part of the environment. You mm. would have farmers as part of your social circle. The people that are growing your food would be the people you know and run into the same way you run into anyone else in your normal daily sure. walks of life. Well, it makes sense because what else is going on on the rooftops? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's a bit, um, uh, I like the green roofs. It's a great trend we're on to right now, but as someone once put it, we're still uh, in the stage now where we're building the ship at sea. So we're still trying to figure out <laughs> exactly how to do these green roofs. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to do them. We know that. It's a great idea. Why uh, not use all of that massive percentage of space? But I just wish that it was less of an engineer-driven trend okay. and more of a designer people-driven trend, which would say, we don't really care about sedums. Sedums are those succulents yes. that, you know, you can turn a roof green, but they don't really do a whole lot else for you. Why not use those roofs as gardens, farms, recreational places, beautiful places, mm -hmm. parks that the so, city would enjoy? Rather than just grass that takes water and all of that, what about uh, cabbage? and What grows best uh, in the air, uh, uh, fruit, vegetable-wise? Uh, it depends on the care you put into it. So you can grow anything. You just have to realize it's a different micro environment you're working on there. Mm -hmm. It's hotter, it's harsher, it's drier because of the wind. All of those things can be good if you're growing a Mediterranean type of plant, which we all know about the Mediterranean diet now mm -hmm. and how that's going to keep us alive longer. Yes. So why not give it a try? Um, you can't get away with that. But you just have to be conscious of where you are, where the plant is, and provide what that plant needs. Mm -hmm. I, I was teasing earlier when I called you Johnny Appleseed, but <laughs> I suspect rather than a vacant lot on, on some ugly corner in the city, why not have an apple orchard or a bunch of pear trees? Oh, I'm all for the community orchards. We're just starting to see them come on now. And for me, it's one great solution for a wider range of people than, say, the community garden. Mm -hmm. Because growing vegetables is a lot of work. You still do have to get down yes. and dig out the weeds and till the soil. And, you know, there's a bit of a grunt effort involved in there. 
Whereas an orchard, once it's planted, it's a bit more of a puttering around kind of activity, which is great for different people mm -hmm. of varying levels of physical uh, ability. Sure. Have you thought about how you would distribute the apples or the figs? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's great to have a, a city orchard or a community plot, but yeah. who gets the apples, who gets the figs, or is it a free-for-all, uh, uh, go to the homeless shelters? What? Actually, it can be all of the above, and that's what ends up happening. Um, I'm in a community orchard. We have more than 300 kinds of fruit trees. Really? Yeah. And 300 kinds of fruit trees in do. Vancouver? In Vancouver, in Strathcona, the oldest community garden in the city. Yes. We have over an acre of the orchard part alone. We also mm. grow a lot of trees in the espalier system, which is a way to grow a lot of varieties of fruit in a small area, such as a portion of a backyard. Now tell me about espalier, how that works. Espalier is a way to plant much more closer than the normal fruit tree used to be planted. Used to be you'd plant an apple tree, say, and it would be a big spreading apple tree, mm -hmm. and you could hold the square dance under it and put a porch swing and sure. uh, you know everything around it under that single apple tree. Now nobody grows that way. We all grow on dwarfing rootstock, and that brings down the size of the tree itself. It doesn't bring down the size of the fruit. So same size fruit, but it's much smaller. With an espalier system, where you can grow it just to the height of a shoulder or if you want to reach up a head height, and you can put them even two feet apart on center. So in the space of a small, you know, one quarter of a backyard, mm -hmm. you can grow eight, 10, 12 different kinds of trees. I didn't know, but and fruit the same. So fruit the same size. Being an arborist, what are the tricks to that? Oh, you just get the right stock. That's the dwarf uh, root stocks are mm -hmm. the only type you can buy now in the trade, so they're everywhere. I didn't know. Yeah. Obviously, don't have any of those. We'll get you some. Okay. We'll try them. Now, soil <laughs> is the secret, as you know. Healthy uh, soil, healthy plants, healthy food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is healthy soil? Organic soil. Organic soil. Well, that's teaching, a start. When I'm teaching people workshops and how to get started in that, I always teach them organic is the way to go. Mm -hmm. You can go with synthetics, of course. It's the way the industrial agriculture system has gone in the last century, and that's a big part of the problem. Okay, so what if you have organic soil and you've done it all right? Yeah. And your neighbor is Mr. Spray Pants. <laughs> do you know what I mean? The neighbor I do. I do. has the lawn on drugs, the perfect lawn. <laughs> <laughs> drugs yeah. everywhere. You know the guy I wish I could have taken the picture of? I have a mental picture and that's mm -hmm. all. But it was uh, one of the yards that's um, filled with gravel. You know, they just right. take out everything, screw it. Yes. I'm, I'm getting the, it. Plants, the gravel. Yes. There was one dandelion in the middle of this gravel had the temerity to grow. No. And he was out there with a bottle of Roundup. I bet. Over it, like, you know, I'll get yes. you. I know that neighbor. Well, we so what do you do people with who that are neighbor? Compulsive about weeds. <laughs> weed in this case, mm -hmm. a single weed. Yeah, what do you do about that neighbor? Um, it's a education. It's a long-term struggle we're onto yes. here. M many more people are onto it now than they were five years ago. Mm -hmm. Five years from now, many many more people are going to be onto right. it. That's why I call it the new food revolution and urban agriculture because uh, you know many of the parks are onto it now some of the city parks are onto it now they don't want our kids and our dogs playing in the pesticides so they've decided to have it not as perfect a uh, little more wild and but more not beautiful with to some chemicals to me uh, more beautiful for one because it more reflects the actual bioregion mm -hmm. we're living in it reflects the seasons more I don't mind seeing a flower fade and die right. and see what comes next because to me that's nature. Sure, that's and get a your thing. lawn off drugs. I think get somebody wrote that book. You know, and get off your lawn. And get you off your lawn. You don't need the lawn at all. Oh, I guess that's true. You can it's grow kind food of fun, on that. but you could grow food, and we may have to one day is the point. So learn how now. Are you an elevated bed guy for veg? Yeah, raised beds are great because they will warm up the soil so you can extend your planting season. Mm. Now it's still cold out here, even yes. though it's supposed to be warm. But if you have a raised bed, the soil will be warmer, so you can get away mm -hmm. with earlier crops. It's also a lot less bending, which is a nice thing for people who get True. that gardener's back. And they back. look great. But now uh, there's a thing called companion planting, I know, but there's also uh, on the farm, my granddad grew beautiful flowers and corn and all the veg. It was all in together, in well, a sense, like the... Yeah. 
I don't know if that's a good thing to do or not. You know, you that have is the exactly onions a good next. thing to do because mm. it's a um, diverse selection of crops you do. That's another mistake we made in the last century when we get when agribusiness took over agriculture right. and they went to the monocrop method. And that turns out to be good for one-time harvest of something that they can make a profit with. Right. Not good for the planet. Not actually good for the plant itself because they're really quite weak. One pathogen can come in and destroy that whole crop. Mm -hmm. So what do you got to do? You've got to lace it with herbicides and pesticides and artificially prop up that single crop. Right. Whereas if you have a diverse crop system and you rotate your crops, which is what all organic farmers do, you don't have to go that artificial route, you go natural. Sure, it's what my granddad did. He rotated crops and he saved seeds. And well, how'd they taste, uh, your granddad's oh, crops? Oh, like the way? nothing you'll taste today. Like food. Pretty much. Like, like food. food. Yeah. Really good food, but and they were, uh, he was proud of his corn. <laughs> Do you know <laughs> what I mean? And, uh, hey, we're all proud of our corn. I anything you grow, I don't mean that he was a That's simple man, but he was uh, proud of his corn and yeah. people in the, in the county wanted uh, his seeds. Yeah. Oh, seeds are... Big. Yeah. I mean, seeds are everything in one sense. If you mm -hmm. control the seeds, you control agriculture, you control food, you control the planet. And that's why it's so right. scary right now that the one of the world's biggest chemical companies has become the world's biggest seed company. It's true. It starts with an M. It starts I'm with an M. I'm going to say it. It's Go Monsanto. ahead. It's Monsanto. Yeah. But there's many reasons to plant crops and cover crops and all of that. And in, in essence, they're really beautiful. And it just makes sense, you know, onions alone. I yeah. love onions and garlic, the big plumy flowers. And yeah, yeah, and that's another thing I'm trying to do with the book is get people to understand that food is beautiful in all its stages. Mm -hmm. It's not just when it gets on your plate and is carefully adorned right. to look like a gourmet and, meal. And uh, as you suggest in here, well, I know this as a fact, anybody can grow a zucchini. <laughs> anybody. And share it. <laughs> and share it, <laughs> and we do. Yeah. Yes, carrots are a little tougher. The perfect carrot, a little tougher. Yeah, well, soil, if you have a nice, more loose sort of soil, you can get better luck is with that your carrots, Is that what it is? Probably. They're not so crooked and yeah, don't yeah. have a lot of friends. Yeah. Well, nice to see you again. Great seeing you again, too. Thanks Thank very you. much for having me. David Tracy, his new book, Urban Agriculture, Ideas and Designs for the New Food Revolution.